All right, we'll just stay paused for a second to give everyone a chance to refine the stream. Uh, and let's have a look in the settings. Measurement units, Imperial, metric. <clears throat> so that'll be basically uh, the differences there between uh, miles per hour and kilometers per hour, I would imagine. Yeah, it'll be whether it's metric or Imperial. That'll also choose whether you're in miles or meters and so on and so forth. Right, I think we're ready to get started again. Let's uh, restart. And we are just over a mile away. So yeah, I'm not quite sure what caused the internet to hiccup there. It, was, it might be my internet, it might be PSN. Um, PlayStation Network has been really kind of temperamental for quite a while now. They really need to get on that and sort that out. I keep getting disconnected just from chat parties. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. So let's uh, gradually coast in as a 43 whizzes past us there. Not many coaches on that one. Very short train. Start breaking down. Am I going to hopefully join the 24 hour stream on FS19 if they're able to sort out multiplayer? What 24 hour stream? Any Low Nook episode coming out soon? Yes, tomorrow. And do I think multiplayer would be good for this game? Uh, probably not, no. It's, you know... It would, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't see how it would work. You, instead of seeing an AI train whiz past once every blue moon, you would see uh, a, a computer, con a human-controlled train whiz past. There'd be no real interaction between players apart from just watching each other whiz past. That would be it. You know, unless you want to get a lot of people just riding on someone else's train. I don't think multiplayer would be that good or in interesting or important for this. I really don't. And if it came down to them wasting time trying to add multiplayer into this when they could be making the game better, I'd rather just stick to making the game better. I would love to have 100,000 subscribers, uh, but uh, yeah, for some reason, people just don't find my channel. You know, it grows very slowly. I gain maybe 10 subscribers a day on average. It's very slow going. But at the end of the day, I would rather have people watching my channel that want to watch my channel 
you know, for the content that I put out rather than, you know, only tuning in when there's a, a mod video or a map tour and then ignoring everything else that I do because I'd end up with a terrible views to subs ratio. You know, I could have 20,000 subscribers and if only a thousand people are watching, what's the point? <laughs> what's the point in having those extra 19,000 subs when they don't watch anything? So, you know, it might take a while for people to find the channel, but, you know, hopefully when they do find it, they'll like what they see and they'll stick around. Is this game worth getting for PS4? Uh, depends. If you like simulators, if you like realism simulators as well because this is a very realistic simulator uh, it helps if you have an interest in trains as well otherwise you may get a bit bored of it but understand that there will be quite a few DLC packs coming out over the next months and maybe years for this game uh, the, the next one is well the first one is on the way in September uh, and they will not be cheap I don't, uh, just reading through, uh, Yo Dog It's Jesus says, I don't uh, have dumb intros and I don't beg for subs. No, I, I, I prefer to let my, my, my work speak for itself. I don't feel the need to you know, tell people to smash that like button because it just sounds so ridiculous. <laughs> you know, if you uh, be sure to like this video, smash that like button. You know, it's just, it's such a stupid phrase. I can't stand it. You know, people just, you know, they put on ridiculous, over-the-top, sensationalist voices and come up with ridiculous catchphrases and, uh, and sound bites just to try and make their channel stand out. But everybody's doing it, so nobody's channel stands out. They all just sound exactly the same. And it just winds me up, it irritates me. You know, so I just, I like to keep things understated. You know, I like to keep my intros themed around what I'm putting out and uh, you know keep them nice and simple and clean and straightforward and I don't go begging for, vi for views I don't go begging for subs you know if people want to do that it's fantastic if they don't yeah, fair enough but you know I'm not gonna sit there and you know you know and beg for thing for people to, to, to do things for me reading through and Armour Elite doesn't seem to like this game which begs the question why are you watching a stream of this game if you hate this game I'm, I'm, I'm just curious you know it just seems like a, a waste of your time if you have absolutely no love for this game at all why are you watching a live stream on it Ah, bah, because I'm awesome. Ah, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> like I, say, I was just completely dream if you had absolutely no interest and hated the game. Well, that answers my question. Fantastic. Oh, I better slow down. I just realised the station's coming up and we're doing over 70. <laughs> Brandon asks, do I mean like FS Club? No, I'm not talking about FS Club or you know, or, or any other sort of uh, console farming YouTuber. I'm just talking about YouTubers in general. You know, they, they have these silly little jingles and, you know, um, and PewDiePie is a classic example of someone who I just cannot loathe. He's got that fake internet personality. 
uh, where he just acts so ridiculously over the top and has these stupid catchphrases and just screams and guffaws and acts like a complete idiot over the camera and he appeals to very young children and that's about it anyone over the age of about 14 or 15 is you know tends to find him incredibly annoying after a very short period of time but that's what works for him and he's very successful he's one of, you know he was one of the big established names the first big established names and he got very very rich doing it and he still has a lot of views but the channel is nowhere near as successful as it was a couple of years ago. A lot of people have just kind of grown, you know, grown tired of his uh, over-the-top antics. And there are a lot of other YouTubers out there that just, when they do live streams, they just throw all these insane graphics over there. I, I don't watch a lot of live streaming because it's always, you know, uh, you know, um, these huge overlays of graphics over the top of the game so you can't really see that much of what it is you're trying to watch and uh, you get these you know jingles playing every time you know someone makes a comment or someone subscribes you get this loud sound effect and uh, it just it drives you insane it's 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 internet you know footage for people with no attention span whatsoever and you have to constantly keep making these loud noises and big flashing images just to keep their attention on the screen And that's not the sort of demographic I want to appeal to. I want to appeal to people who want to have a nice, a nice time just relaxing and watching what I hope is a is a is a well put together quality video. Would I do a tutorial on building the uh, Diverging Diamond Interchange? Uh, <laughs> maybe as a side project at some point in the future. I mean, I'm planning on putting perhaps another one in my city somewhere, uh, but not the interchange uh, with the, um, you know, with the big monster one that I put together. Not that one with the two freeways merging together, because that's just incredibly time consuming to try and do with terraforming. Oh, excuse me, with terraforming involved in that as well. But I do plan on putting in a regular diverging diamond in somewhere, I think, as my city expands. So maybe I'll do a separate video on just how I build the, the diver diverging diamond and try and perhaps do a time lapse of, uh, <clears throat> of it being built and try and condense it down, record lots of footage and then speed it up and squash it into a single episode or something. I'll have to have a think about that. But to be fair, the easiest way to build them is just to take a guide image and uh, try and recreate the guide image. You know, there's no set formula that I had. You know, this has to be positioned in this exact spot and it has to turn at this exact angle. Or it's, you know, it's all freehand built. You know, though I had a couple of bits where I kind of put some guidelines in as where I wanted it to kind of stop and, and start. And where I wanted certain parts like the bridge to be and, and the spacing I wanted between the bridges. But even that got changed a little bit and you know, uh, you know the whole thing was completely scratch built, you know, freehand. You know, working off a, a kind of a rough guideline of as to what it should look like when it's finished. Yeah, I can see the, the, the comments going back and forth about this game in um, in the chat. You do really, to get the best out of this game, you need to have some kind of interest or, or passion for the trains. You don't have to be a, uh, you know, a full-on train spotter who stands there with a clipboard and a, and a notepad and a, and a camera on the side of a train track for hours and hours on end 
marking down loco numbers as they go past. You don't have to be that level of obsessed with trains. But you know, if you've had a, a you know any kind of involvement with model railways, that'll go a, a good way to getting enjoyment out of this game. Uh, if you you know have just you know lived near railways and seen them going past a lot as a kid and grown up around some iconic trains, if those trains are then available for you to you know get in the controls and drive, then that's something that might appeal to you you know as well and. This is the only way that you can ever, really, if you're not in the profession, to actually drive a train. I mean, we can all get into a sports car and, and you know, drive at ridiculous speeds on the roads, which is highly illegal <laughs> and dangerous. But you can go on a track day. You can, uh, you can get in a, a professional racing car or a rally car and you can go on a track day experience and you can actually see what it's like to be a racing driver, you know, for not too much money. Ooh, we're going to speed. We're going to speed quite badly. <laughs> risking, uh, risking derailments there as we went over those points. We got got away with that. Um, but yeah, there are track day experiences for if you if you have uh, a passion for motorsport and you want to experience that. You know, you can do in real life. You can't just jump behind the you know you know the controls of a train. It is a highly um, difficult job to do. It takes years and years and years of training and uh, opportunities to get trained to become a driver don't come along very often. I know because it is something I did actually look into a few years ago. And, uh, they're just, you know, job opportunities are so few and far between to get into train driving. Um, So it's it's just one of those you know one of those things that you know it's almost impossible to try and achieve that in real life unless you have some kind of connections or a, or an absolute ton of money. <laughs> you can open a checkbook and make a a huge donation. Um, whereas you know everything else you can go out there and you can kind of do in the real world. This you can't, and this is the closest you'll ever get to actually manually being able to drive a train. So. You know, it's one of those things that you know. If you have that desire to experience that, then again, it's you know, this is the game for you. If you don't really have any real interest in in trains or model railways, or never been curious about wanting to drive a train or anything like that, then you probably won't enjoy this game. And it will be an expensive franchise. I can tell you that for now. It will be a very expensive franchise. Because you know, obviously you've got to pay for the base game, and then the DLCs will come out, and they will not be cheap DLCs. They'll be twenty, you know, twenty quid each, or there or thereabouts. You know, twenty-five bucks if you're in the states per pack. You know, they're not going to be cheap. I think this might be our final stop, actually. Where are we? Reading. Yes, this is it. This is our final stop. Let's uh, get back in the cab. Our diverging diamonds are Europe thing. Uh, no, um, they're an American thing. You know, I mean, I think there's a couple in 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 Europe, but you know, they're they're pretty much a, a, a North American thing. So, you know, states and I think maybe possibly Canada. Uh, there aren't a huge number. There, there are more recent things, sort of last sort of you know decade or so that they've started coming into uh, into existence, really. Are these doors locked? No. There we go. Objective complete. Oh, look at that. We've got green ticks all the way through. That's beautiful. Love that. Right. Uh, 
Service is scheduled to start. Uh, oh, in a long time. Yeah, let's uh, see if we can find a different service to run. Uh, in fact, there aren't going to be any more coming through. That's a class 43. We're going to save those for another day. Uh, unless there's another 40, another 166 coming through, then I think we're going back to the main menu. We'll give it a second. See if one turns up on one of these other platforms. But I don't think they will. We're kind of at the end of the line here. I'd say we got here a lot quicker than I was expecting. Yeah, there's no sign of any other trains coming in. So let's uh, let's exit to the menu. And let's pick another service. And another time of day and weather condition. How you doing, Carl? Welcome to the stream. You wish the, tra uh, the draw distance of the tracks was a little bit better. It's not that bad. And, uh, you know, it's a performance thing. It keeps the game running reasonably smooth. I mean, look at the draw distance on Farming Simulator. It's terrible. <laughs> it's absolutely terrible. So, yeah, you kind of expect that, you know, for this kind of game on a console. Let's see what random weather we get this time. Spring clear. Okay, so we've had summer. Now we've got spring. Let's start here at the Reading train, uh, de train Care Depot. Can you run across the tracks? Uh, yes, you can if you want to. I wouldn't recommend it either in the game or in real life. definitely wouldn't recommend it in real life it's both illegal and highly likely to get you killed <laughs> right stop at Reading at uh 2.22. 2.22? Wow, that's early in the morning. Uh, where are the lights? Let's get the cab lights on. Uh, night lights on. We are pulling out of the depot. Making our way to uh, to the station, I think. Pick up our first load of passengers. Although, it's very early in the morning for the train to be running. Half past two in the morning. Hi, Michael. Welcome to the stream. Just coast in at 10 miles an hour. What's our gradient? Gradient is zero. We're on level track. Uh, get a little bit more speed.
the service will end when I get to Reading, but it, you know we should be able to wait for the next the next you know part of the service to start. So shouldn't have to wait too long, I don't think. There's no reason why the train would park at a station at 20 past two in the morning if it wasn't going to run for another four hours. still a mile out but we are switching on to the main line so we'll be able to get some speed up in a minute once we get over these uh, these points right, we can get a bit more speed up now Did I watch the German Gamescom videos? Uh, I watched some of the German Gamescom videos. I watched others that didn't have a commentary on them. Uh, and I could understand a little bit here and a little bit there because I did speak a little bit of German when I was younger and I've remembered a, a small fraction of that. But uh, yeah, I was basically, I wasn't really paying attention to what was being said. I was just paying attention to what I could see on the screen. And yeah, I, I liked what I saw for the most part. Gary says he's only found three collectibles so far. I think I'm about three, maybe four collectibles myself. I haven't really gone looking for them, to be honest. There are guides out there uh, that'll show you the locations of where every single one is. I have resisted the temptation to, to start looking for those yet. Uh, but, you know, at some point, if I have no idea... What, I, I see, I don't even know half the time what it is I'm looking for. The collectibles guide, in terms of telling you what to look for and where to look for them... You know, in terms of hints and help, is not particularly good. They really could do with uh, improving that. Because I think there are like 60 collectibles in the coming DLC. In the uh, Somerset, West Somerset Railway pack. I think there's like 60 collectibles in that pack. Which is just insane. And they've kind of given you some hints and points as to where you can find some of them. But even so, it's uh, it's a long, long way to go to find all 60 of them Adrian, welcome to the stream uh, what didn't I like um, I didn't like that the fact that you know, once again, the main vehicles to drive around in look to be American trucks. It would be nice if we actually had a European vehicle to drive around in as part of the, the base game stuff. I understand why uh, Giants are, are pandering to the American audience uh, because it's a huge market that they're desperate to crack. Uh, and it's, you know, part of the reason why Farm Sim has exploded over the last couple of years uh, and become a much bigger franchise than it was you know, for Farming Sim 15 and Farming Sim 13, you yeah, know, because they're appealing to that American audience by throwing in more and more American stuff in the base game and and making, you know, it's... I feel like the, sh the focus is shifting a lot to the American audience and kind of, you know, not so much ignoring the European audience, but perhaps leaving them behind a little bit. And I'd just like to see a little bit of parity restored in that respect. There we go. Next service will start at 2.25, so two minutes to go. Uh, some of the uh, the visuals kind of... Again, it's, it's a preview build, so you can't really take it as uh, exactly what's going to happen. Some of the weeds looked a bit naff. Um... I was a little disappointed with the footage I saw of weeds. I mean, I'm, I've, I've heard there's other footage out there that actually looks a lot better. Um, but the footage I saw of weeds wasn't all that impressive. I was hoping for something a bit more exciting than, you know, clumps on a field. 
that instantly disappeared when you touched them with a weeder. Um, no, I don't think it is the same lizard truck. I think it's a different truck. But um, uh, there was a lot of glistening, I noticed, going on on the light fitting, on the lights on the tractor. I don't know if that's the sunlight hitting them and reflecting off or if it's just really glitchy lighting controls. Again, it's, it's too hard to read too much into it because it's still a preview build. There's still a few months to go before the game is scheduled to be released and there'll be a lot of polishing and tweaking and, uh, you know, and, and just finishing going on over the next couple of months before the game gets sent out to be printed onto disc and then you know uh, added to digital stores so you know, there's, there's still plenty of time for things to change and be improved but yeah there are a few things that I was a little underwhelmed with a lot of the stuff I was very impressed with though so but again it's hard to tell when you're watching a screen grab as to uh, what is console footage and what is PC footage Because I get the feeling that you know, we may see basic game disparity between PC and console again in terms of things like you know, blinkers and, uh, and uh, you know, being able to put like, hazard lights on and, and beacons being reflective. And obviously we know there's going to be bell limits and, and uh, slot limits and stuff for console. We already know about that. We don't know what the limits are going to be yet. We don't have the numbers, but we know they're going to be there. Um, but I saw Chop Straw in the base game, you know, uh, being spat out onto the field by the ideal, Defend Ideal. And I don't know if that was on the PC and therefore will be a PC only edition or whether that was something that will also make it into the console version. You know, there's unanswered questions at the moment and we just have to be patient and wait for more details to be officially released you know because little bits will leak out and you know footage will come out and people will just make assumptions based off a few minutes of footage and say well this is definitely going to be in the game because I saw it on, on a Gamescom video but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be on every version of the game it might only be on the PC it might not make it onto consoles and I would rather before I say this is definitely going to happen and this is definitely going to happen I'd rather wait until I get some official clarification on that from Giants Well, if you want the digital version, uh, Adrian, then, yeah, you will have to wait to pre-order it. Um, I keep checking the store every few weeks to see if it's been added. Um, it wasn't last time I checked earlier this week. Uh, and for some reason, games seem to get loaded onto the store for pre-order, you know, sometimes in very different ways, depending on the territory as well. So, you know, I was able to pre-order. What was the last game I was able to pre-order? Uh... Yeah, I can't remember what it was, but there was a game I, I pre-ordered and um, or was available for pre-order. Oh, I don't remember what it was. It was Pure Farming, and Techland obviously gave me a copy of Pure Farming, so I didn't need to pre-order it. But Pure Farming was available for pre-order um, months and months and months in advance here in the UK uh, and also had a 10% discount for pre-ordering because if you're a PlayStation Plus member, and yet you couldn't pre-order it on the American store, I think, until like a couple of days before it actually went live. Um, it was one of those strange things, you know, I, I was able to pre-order it in, in advance of like four months of it being released. Uh, and yeah, the Americans couldn't pre-order it at all until it was pretty much out. So a bit strange, you know, sometimes different regions load things onto the store different ways. why are the headlights terrible on this train well because they're very small lights they're they basically they're not so much for you to see where you're going i mean it it, it kind of helps but um they're more just to uh mark you out to oncoming traffic you know so that uh you know oncoming drivers you know oncoming trains can see you and know that you're there 
and also uh, anyone who's working on the lines, you know, who are doing any kind of maintenance can see you coming. They're less for you and more for other others. Oh, excuse me, is boomeranged, boomeranged his way back into chat. How are you doing again? And uh, Rob James says you can pre-order this uh, on the Xbox. So, yeah, you can't pre-order it on PlayStation 4 at the moment. Uh, but, you know, no doubt you'll be able to at some point soon. Now that Gamescom has been and gone, I would imagine it won't be long before pre-orders start appearing on, on the PlayStation. I would imagine either the end of this month or early September and we'll be able to start pre-ordering it. And that's still two months away from it being released. Uh, and that's if you want the digital copy. If you want to get it from a retailer, uh, quite a few retailers are allowing pre-orders already. And of course, Amazon have been, you know, they, they put down placeholder pre-order you know, acceptances and then they just adjust the price once they get the, the official details and say, this is how much it's going to cost. Do you want to keep the pre-order? Do you want to cancel it? Blah, 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 blah. Um, and sometimes, you know, the, pre the confirmed price is more than what they'd put in as a placeholder price. More often than not, it's usually cheaper. Depends on the game. Better start slowing down. I've just realised how fast I'm going and how close that station is. Let's go full service and hope I can stop. I'm not confident on this. I'm really not confident. <laughs> I could go emergency, but I might just make this, you know, actually. I'll overshoot a little bit, but at least I'll stay on the platform. Oh, how'd you like that? We almost got it perfectly. That's awesome. Digital is the only way to go for farming sim. Uh, yes, I would personally you know we'll just I'll, buy, I'll get a digital copy will I be getting FIFA 19 no um, I don't play FIFA very often this is the first FIFA I bought in seven years and uh, I only bought it because it was on sale for like 15 quid and it, the World Cup was on and England were doing well <laughs> so that's the only reason I bought it Otherwise, I wouldn't have bothered. Let's, let's use the buttons. Oh, the game is always available to pre-order, you know, way in advance on PC, either either direct from Giants or from Steam. You know, uh, it always is. It's you know, we're, we're talking about console version at the moment, though. Is that door closed? I, it doesn't beep, so I can't really tell. No, it didn't close. Will I get busted in when it comes out? I still haven't seen anything to say that it is coming out, other than you saying it in the chat. So, um... Uh, I keep meaning to try and Google that, and I keep forgetting. Adam, have I seen uh, the gameplay of Farming Sims 19? Uh, yes, I posted two different videos on my Facebook page. Uh, one was a six or seven minute video, the other was a 24 minute video of gameplay footage. So yeah, I've seen a fair bit of it. What's the next game that I'd like to buy apart from Farming Sim 19? Um, truck driver I want to make sure I've got money for truck driver um, I want to be able to make sure I can get my hands on the West uh, Somerset railway pack that comes out in September for this um, I don't know what else really I mean, there's a couple of games for myself you know, not for the channel so 
possibly Red Dead, although I might well wait for that to come down in price. I'm not as excited for Red Dead as I, as I was the first time around. I was really excited for Red Dead on PS3, not so much this time around, just because I'm so worried about what you know Rockstar are going to do to it in terms of the online, that they're just going to abandon the single player like they did with Grand Theft Auto V and just focus purely on the online experience and, and raking in those uh, those shark cards or the Red Dead equivalent of shark cards. Because as soon as they realised how much money they could make you know, with the shark cards, they immediately just discarded all their plans for uh, DLCs and expansions for farming uh, for uh, for GTA Five. There was supposed to be a single-player, you know, campaign expansion, never turned up. They kept saying, "Yeah, we'll do an expansion. We'll do an expansion." Five years, not a single DLC, all just updates for, um, you know, for a very toxic online experience. All with stuff that's priced horrendously expensively to try and get you to buy expensive shark cards to shortcut your way to getting the uh, the top stuff. And I'm really worried they're going to do that with Red Dead as well. Did you know that Rockstar put out at least one game every year? Every year until GTA V came out. Sometimes two games, sometimes multiple games but always at least one game every single year until GTA 5 came out and then we've had nothing since then other than updates for GTA Online. It, it, it just worries me what they're going to do to Red Dead. Oh, Spider-Man. Yes, I'm excited for Spider-Man. That does look very, very good. Angel Fire. Yes, I'll quite happily... Uh Switch the camera views. I'll do that now, actually. I just stood up by mistake. <laughs> let's sit back down again. Uh, let's um, let's jump out. I did this on the first run, uh, but we'll switch to uh, the cameras. So we've still got four miles to go. We've got plenty of time. So, uh, oh, my train interior lights are off. That's my. my interior lights. Uh, I need to actually jump back in for a second. Uh, where are they? Train preheats. Train lighting. There we go. There we go. <laughs> we actually have lighting on our train now. Um, Whoops, yeah, completely forgot and left any passengers that we might have. Bearing in mind, we're probably not going to get that many people on, on the train because it's 2.30 in the morning. Um, do we have anybody on the train? No, we have nobody on the train. <laughs> Nobody on the train, apart from us. But we'll swoop around to give you some interesting kind of shots. That's not a bad shot. Uh, 1.7 miles to go. No speed restrictions at the moment. Craig says this game has been cancelled in New Zealand. Really? Um... Any word on why? I'd, I'd love to know more about why this game's been cancelled. 
how much is this DLC for, for this game going to be? Uh, I, it's not been an announced yet, but probably £20, $25 in that kind of price range. Uh, a GT6, is that coming out? Probably not until the next generation of consoles. I would imagine. Oh, we need to go emergency brake. We're not going to stop. I left it way too late. I was going much faster than I was expecting. There we go. Anybody waiting to get on? No. Nobody wants to ride my train. <laughs> it is ridiculously early in the morning. So it's probably not that surprising. Uh, we'll pick we'll pick another one that's more daytime next time. Hopefully busy. Maybe try and get a rush hour train so that we can get lots of people on and see people getting on and off each stop. This is this is quite disappointing at the moment. <laughs> Nobody's riding the service at all. The game does look great, it really does. I mean, it actually looks a little bit better than you're seeing, because I'm actually streaming at 720p to try and keep the image a bit more stable. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm playing this on uh, a PS4 Pro with super sampling, so it's 1080p, kind of upscaled to 4K, and then, you know, scaled back to 1080p again. Uh, so it should run a little bit smoother, look a little bit nicer. Let's just have a look through the window. Oh, I think we got bounced by a signal there. Hello, that's me. <laughs> it won't let me open the door. <laughs> For obvious reasons, it's locked. <laughs> so I don't throw myself out the train in sadness at nobody riding passengers. But it does look absolutely beautiful, this game. It really does. And uh, I love it. I think it's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I had a train set when I was a kid as well. I had, uh, you know, you know the Hornby 00 stuff. And uh, a few years back, about 10 years ago, I tried to get in, uh, get a new model railway up and running and started doing some stuff in N-Gage. But it, I just, you know, uh, I lost my job and had to sell my stuff because I just couldn't afford to keep going with the hobby. It is horrendously expensive to get into model railways these days, as is everything, really. Any kind of hobby these days is, is usually horrendously expensive. I mean, you look at Scale Electric and stuff like that. You know, Scale Electric used to be quite nice uh, price-wise. You know, well, not quite nice, but not too horrendously expensive. Now the sets are extortionate. Everything just gets very, very pricey very, very quickly these days.
I'm just getting paid for driving a train around and, and the train well, uh, well, and getting paid for doing nothing while the train company's doing uh, you know getting no passengers. Yeah, I can kind of see the point on that. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, this is still a, a, one of those dangerous and stressful jobs. And you know, there are people out there that you know get very, very, very depressed and very low and. You know, they want to end it and they tend to throw themselves in front of a moving train and the train that's moving at speed and it is incredibly traumatic for the drivers involved in those incidences it can end their career instantly you know, they can just never ever get behind you know the controls of a train ever again you know because they're haunted by it and then you've got the cleanup crew that has to come in and pick up you know, just mess for potentially miles you know, it's, yeah. And you have to be so hot and safe. It takes years and years and years of training to be a train driver because you're you're responsible for, you know, a lot of lives. And if you screw up, you know, and you derail your train at very high speeds, you are potentially killing hundreds of people. If you don't pay attention to the signals and you go through a light that you're not supposed to go through and you go straight into a head-on collision with another train, you know, another train, it's carnage. I remember seeing horrific rail crashes being shown on the news when I was a kid. You know, brutal. And trains are, are constructed in a much safer way these days than they were 30, 40, 50 years ago. But even so, you know, any kind of train accident is still going to be messy. We need to slow down again. Maybe we'll get some passengers this time. Oh, oh, oh. I just slapped my reverser in <laughs> into the wrong direction. I, I hope I haven't stalled the train. I've stopped way too soon there. Let's get some speed going again. No, I didn't stall the train. That's good. I like these little built-up areas as well. You know, they're not realistic in you know in a lot of cases, but you know, to the actual towns or locations that you, you're coming up to. But they do give a nice kind of effect of going into a built-up area and then drifting out of that into the countryside. And I like it. Oh god, yeah, the trains in India where people are literally just hanging off the side. Uh, it's insane. You know, the, tr the safety laws in, you know, in some of the less developed countries are almost non-existent in some cases. Um, and it's a wonder that they don't have, you know, more horrific accidents with massive numbers of fatalities. You know, everyone complains about, um, you know, health and safety rules in this country and... And, and you know how it can really just you know clog things up and just make things overly complicated but they're there for a reason <laughs> if SC don't do dumb stuff and die because of it still don't think anyone's getting on or off the train No, there's nobody running this service with us at all. Not a single passenger. Looks like we're on a very lonely run all the way over to, to London here. There might be some people waiting at Paddington. That's probably as, as much as we're going to get. Adrian says, I have a friend who's been on the trains for 40 years and told me that uh, on your third death they retire you on full pay. 
Um, I wouldn't be at all surprised. I would not be at all surprised. I mean, it is a deeply traumatic experience to go through once. If you go through that three times, that would just... Unless you are cold and, and unfeeling or you just, you know... Or you, you, know, you kind of get off on that stuff, then <laughs> yeah, that would... Three, that would break you, surely. You know, it would... You, you, you wouldn't be able to trust yourself, you know. And, and then you become a safety risk. I can't imagine, you know, uh, what it would be like to just go through one of those experiences. But to go through it three times, yeah, I don't surprise. I'm not surprised if you, if you continue. You know, and, and it happens to you three times. I'm not surprised you retired on full pay because that is just a horrific thing to, to go through. Am I going back to Railway Empire? Um, possibly. There is new DLC that's out for that. I mean, I, I didn't really do anything with the Viva La Mexico uh, DLC. Uh, but there is a new Canadian DLC uh, that's come out. And I am very tempted to uh, to look into that maybe pick up that and, and see what that's like because that introduces uh, snow in the northern map because there's a new northern map uh, so you know whenever you're in the northern territory then you do get some snow and there's a night cycle that's been added as well so i'm toying with the idea of going back to railway empire but at the same time you know i'm still trying to live stream this i'm trying to live stream south mountain creamery for, you know every now and again uh, i've got lone oak you know which is you know, quite time consuming to get a single episode planned and recorded and we're doing Jurassic World and we're doing City Skylines as well I I don't know if I've got time to squeeze yet another game in there on a regular basis as well so I might wait and see what happens with that game I don't know I mean the numbers the viewing numbers for Jurassic World aren't great you know, it's maybe 200 people that are watching those episodes. Um, but I'm having so much fun with those games, you know, with that game at the moment. And, you know, you guys funded it. So, you know, it would be wrong of me to not run it through for at least another 10, 20, 10, 15 episodes or so. You know, it's only fair because you're the ones that paid for it. So, um, you know, Jurassic World is going to continue for a, for a little while yet. But, you know, if the viewing numbers, you know, continue to, to, you know, slowly decline, then maybe we'll end end that a little bit early and uh, uh, I move over to Railway Empire. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Is it running for you guys? Can you still hear me? Oh, there we go. I did the refresh and it's running. I was panicking for a second there. I thought the stream was about to crash again. Yeah, I had a... Um I had a Flying Scotsman when I was a kid. I had uh, a Mallard. You know. um, I mean, those two are two of the most iconic steam trains ever. The Flying Scotsman and the Mallard. And uh, what else did I have? That was a, a, a well-known loco. Um, I had the old Hornby set. You know, the Smoky Joe loco. <laughs> the old... Um, 040 um, steam shunter called Smoky Joe. I had one of those. Um, I had a, an Intercity 125, you know, in the blue livery with the orange, you know, the orange nose. Uh, not the white Intercity 125 from uh, a few years later when they kind of gave it a bit of a refresh and a revamp. The original sort of uh, BR blue colour. I 
I had another Steam Loco that was a, a reasonably well-known Loco as well. I can't remember what it was now. Anybody waiting? Nope. We're going to be like this. We're going to be empty all the way to London. That's ridiculous. Uh, the other problem you'll find Angel Fire with uh, modern railways is just how much space they take up if you're going into double O. That's why I looked at N-Gage. You don't get the, the same level of detail because everything's much, much smaller, but you do get, you know, um, you know it's like a, a quarter scale or an eighth scale, something like that, compared to double to O-Gage. Much, much smaller. So you can get a lot more in in the same space. Hell of a lot more in. What do you do in this game? You're thinking about getting it, says Chris. Um, this, essentially, you just drive the trains. You know, you can do it uh, internally, externally. So we're driving externally at the moment, but you can uh, get inside and you can drive from the cabin if you want. You've got all the switches and, and levers and you can either use the keyboard shortcuts or your joystick short, joypad shortcuts, or you can do it manually and you know, control the levers manually like this. Same with the door controls and so on and so forth. You know, you've got all sorts of things you can do. Sound the buzzer every time you're pulling off. You can be as hardcore with this as you want to be, or you can be as you know as you know as laid back with this as you want to be. You know, and and not go over the top with every single thing that you have to do in real life to drive these trains. You know, it's entirely up to you how relaxed you want to be with it. But this is essentially all it is. It's just running trains from one point to another. So if that's not something you're interested in, you know, um, or you only have a, a vague passing interest, then you're not going to get much out of the game and you're going to end up feeling, you know, perhaps cheated a little bit at the end of it. You didn't get your money's worth. Because that's all there is to it. It's just running around. It's just driving different trains. Uh, I'm on island number three at the moment, Kyle. I'm on um, Isla Tacaño. Uh, you're on Isla Peña, by the sound of it. Are there any steam locomotives? Uh, not at the moment. Uh, the PC has, well, the PC has different versions of this game. So Train Sim World, you've got Train Sim World, which is the PC version of this, uh, and then you've got Train Simulator 2018, which does have Steam available. Uh, I'm not sure if that's actual purchasable DLC or if it's a mod pack that's been created, but there are Steam locos available on the PC version of Train Simulator 2018. Uh, which has a huge number of DLC packs available. You know, a lot. It's, it's, we're talking to buy every single one, hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of pounds, um, to, to own everything. It's a, an insane amount. But yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that we will get Steam in the future. I saw a screenshot on their uh, Facebook page of uh, a, a pack for the PC that was the, the Mallard and I'm like oh, I would love to run the Scotsman or the Mallard on this, I really would that would just be incredible I 
if I'm if, if I remember rightly, the Mallard still holds the um, the record for the fastest steam locomotive. Still nobody in this little regional station. Ah, Nicholson Farm has jumped in. How you doing, Nicholson Farm? Good to see you. Do you do all over the world or you do just one state? Um, well, this is in the UK, uh, this particular tra train loop that we're running. This is the Great Western Service. Um, so this is UK only. And you've got three trains in this pack. You've got the Class 166 DMU, which is what we're driving at the moment. Uh, DMU stands for Diesel Multiple Unit. So it's basically you know, these uh, you know, you have three cars that are connected together and sometimes you'll get two DMUs you know, uh, joined together to, uh, to get six cars. So we've got one, two, three. We've got three on this one. Um, but you can sometimes get two of these DMUs that are coupled together so you effectively have a six car train. Um, but this is a DMU. You can get an EMU, which is an electric multiple unit, and that's what the um, the Amtrak is, I think, on the American pack, and certainly the S-Bahn uh, on the German pack. They are definitely, you know, they are definitely EMUs. Uh, there's also the Class 43 HST, which is uh, uh, a, a loco that's over 40 years old now, um, high-speed diesel. The fastest diesel, 125 miles an hour. And uh, there's a Class 66 freight uh, locomotive as well for doing some shunting missions um, and hauling of you know coal and stuff and freight containers. Uh, and that's the UK pack. It's the Great Western pack. Then there's the American pack, which is the Amtrak passenger service that runs into the NEC New York service. And... Uh, then the other one is the uh, CSX loco service for freight services. And then there's a single train for the German pack, the, uh, uh, the S-Bahn pack, which is a passenger service with, a, with an EMU. And a very fast one as well, for that matter. So that's what's available at the moment. And then in September, the West Somerset Railway pack is coming, which is uh, another UK pack, and it's a heritage pack. So uh, we have uh, old preserved stretches of, uh, of heritage railway uh, with you know old heritage locos that have been restored and coaches and stuff. And that's what's going to be the West Somerset Railway pack. It's a, it's a, a real restored patch of... Uh, of train line with uh, a couple of restored locomotives, uh, a 161 diesel shunter and uh, a class 47 diesel uh, from the 70s in their BR livery, their green BR livery, that's British Rail livery, uh, with a rake of uh, you know a, you know luxury restored Mark One coaches as well. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be very very pretty indeed. How are you finding Trains in World, Nicholson Farm? Are you enjoying it? Am I going to be getting the coming DLC? Yes, I will. I will be getting the DLC and I will be featuring it on the channel. So uh, we'll do another live stream you know, uh, to have a look at the, uh, you know, the, the Somerset pack in more detail when it comes out. Oh, and if you want a, a, an idea of the attention to detail, watch the steps.
Oh, no, wait, I'm thinking of a different train. <laughs> I'm thinking of the S-Bahn, I think it is. Yeah, the S-Bahn, the, the, the steps actually uh, tuck away underneath the train when, they're, when the doors are closed, and when the doors open, the steps slide out. I think it's the S-Bahn train. It's getting mixed up with my, tra with my uh, transit packs for a second, then. Do you get multiplayer in this game? No, you don't. Can you adjust to kilometers per hour instead of miles per hour? I believe so. Uh, that would be... I imagine... Changing this to metric. Let's apply that and see what happens. This should theoretically change speed to kilometers. And there we go. Yeah, you can see 0, 0.0 kilometers per hour. So if you want to put it into, you know... Uh, into metric than you can do. I prefer running in miles per hour because that's the unit of measurement that we use. So just reapply those changes. There we go. Can't believe nobody wants to get on the train still. Next stop, 3.06. Oh, uh, we're going to be late on this one. <laughs> we better hit the accelerator and just take off. Uh, take it easy, Adrian. Thanks for stopping by. Have I found a way to access the engine room in the Locos? Uh when you say have I found a way do you mean outside of the way that you're supposed to get to engines in certain bits some trains you can get into uh, various parts you know and and the corridors where the engines are kept but have I found a way to actually get into you know the locked areas no I haven't gone looking for it to be honest They need to add some steam locos. Do I like steam locos? Uh, yes, they definitely need to add some steam locos in the future. Uh, we've been talking about two of the most famous steam locos in the world, the Flying Scotsman and the Mallard, uh, both iconic British locomotives. You know, for, from steam. You know, uh, I would love to see either of those two, you know, preferably both of them, make their way into this game in the future. Whether they will or not, I don't know, but I'd like them to. What time will I be arriving at Paddington? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Um, which way are we headed? This way. That's Ealing Broadway. There's Paddington. So, yeah, not too far. Not too much longer. We're, we're getting there, slowly but surely. We're already, though, uh, a minute, <laughs> a minute and a half behind Ealing Broadway. We're still two miles out. So we're going to be a little bit late by the look of it. Can you customise your own train? No. No, the trains come in the liveries that they come in. There are some trains that will have multiple liveries that you can switch between them. Um, I say multiple, you know, more than one. You know, <laughs> so two, basically. Um, all the trains here have one livery apart from the Class 66. Uh, and that comes in either the DB Schenker livery or the EWS livery. Uh, but everything else is just one livery. So, yeah, no, you can't customise them. Yeah, that's the downside to this game is that, you know, you don't get a huge amount of content in the base game. I mean, you get 
you get three different trains for the Great Western Pack, and you've got a nice 34, 35 mile run on that. Well, ah, I did not see that coming. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um, oh, that was bad. I looked away for a second and, uh... <laughs> yeah, less, less, less said about that, the better. There we go. <laughs> Whoops. We're very late now. <laughs> Look at that. Judged it just perfectly for getting off on the very edge of the platform. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. It's been a while since I've ever shot a platform like that. Not since the very first day. Or well, the very first couple of streams. Nobody saw that colossal error apart from everybody watching the live stream and everyone that's going to watch the replay of the live stream on my channel when it finishes rendering. Where was I before I... Uh suddenly panicked and realized I was going through a station <laughs> 200 yards ahead of me at 70 miles an hour. Um, no, I'm going the wrong direction. There we go. Now we're going in the right direction. Uh, yeah, there's not a massive amount of content in the base game. You've got the Great Western Line, 35 mile run or so with three different trains and different services, but uh, and a few little bits off the side of the main main line to play about with. Um, then you've got one train on the Germany pack, uh, and then two trains on the American pack. It's not massive, uh, but it's enjoyable. Uh, but it is going to be expensive with the DLCs. They're not going to be cheap. You know, I'm expecting 20 quid a pack, which is going to be 25 dollars a pack. You know, it's not going to be a cheap game, but you know. I imagine they'll do plenty of sales. I mean, they do a lot of sales on um, on Steam. They're regularly doing sales on Steam for the content, you know, the additional contents. So I would imagine, you know, they'll quite often pop up on sales on the Xbox and PlayStation stores as well over time. Yeah, I wish they... I, I would... I wish it wasn't going to be so expensive because I think it's just Im immediately going to put a fair few people off. Just they're going to bulk at the price, but uh, you know that could potentially hurt the game going forward if if a lot of people just go, well, no, that's too too rich for my blood and walk away from it. It's it's different on PC because there's a there's a uh, a long-standing built-up hardcore audience of simulator players on PC. The simulator market on console is relatively young, and uh, it worries me that they're going to price themselves out of the uh, the mainstream appeal to simulator players on consoles. Well, 
what's the difference between the train sim world uh, standard and digital deluxe editions to the best of my knowledge you know just reading the descriptions because i've only got the standard edition uh, the digital deluxe contains an extra version of the csx loco but i don't know if it's just a different paint scheme or if it's actually a different uh, a different engine entirely uh, i haven't seen uh, you know footage to be able to uh, say for definite either way but if it's just a different paint job five pound extra sounds a bit expensive for just a paint job Because like the Class 66, as I said, has two liveries. It has the DB Schenker lo uh, livery, and it has the EWS livery, and that's the only difference. Everything else is exactly the same. It's just a different paint scheme on the outside of the engine. And if that's what it is with the CSX, then five pound more just for a different paint scheme is, is quite pricey. Carl says they need a good construction sim for console. Well, Construction Simulator 2 is coming out this year. Uh, on consoles and I will be looking at getting that on you know on the channel that's another game I'm going to be getting at some point in the future someone asked me what games I was looking for for the rest of this year that's another one um, Construction Sim 2 that is definitely coming to console this year I don't know if there's a confirmed release date on that yet but you know it's not too far away oh, we're going way too fast we kind of need to speed a bit, make up some of that lost time, but I don't want to get derailed on the points. I suppose we better start slowing down. We've got a 40 zone coming up in just over half a mile, and we're doing, <laughs> doing 70. Yeah, we're due in Paddington 50 seconds ago. Yeah, it's been a couple of hours, Brandon. Now, I, I don't try, I don't smoke on my main videos, but you know, you know I can't avoid it when I'm live streaming. You know, I've lasted a good couple of hours. I started streaming at 11 o'clock. It's, it's 10 past 1, so... I think I've earned one. Angel Fire's praying for just one passenger. Well, this is my terminus. This is the end of the stop. This is the end of the route, so... There won't be any passengers. <laughs> or at least if there are any passengers, they won't be passengers for me. They'll be passengers for whoever's taking over this train and driving it back towards Reading. Slowing down to 25 as we approach the platforms. I'm going to roll in and hopefully I don't do what I did with a Great Western Class 43 the other day and, and hit the buffers. I was going so fast I forgot to stop <laughs> in time. And I wasn't. I went straight into the, uh, into the buffers at the end of the platform and, uh, and derailed the train. <laughs> right. That was right at the end of one of my first look live streams. I forget which one it was. Might have been number two. Or no, it was number three, I think it was. We uh, we actually derailed the train. It was these buffers, actually. It was this this stop here. I I went went in way too fast, hit those buffers, and the train bounced off the track at the very end of the run. That was not one of my finest moments at all. So now we have to wait for the passengers to load, and then that'll be it. And there's nobody here. <laughs> Absolutely nobody here. In fact, I don't think there's anybody on any of these platforms. 
Nope, there's nobody on any of these platforms at all. That's disappointing. Ah, uh, yeah, Carl was watching. He remembers. <laughs> it's like, I think we'll call it a night here. Bye. Gone. <laughs> Do a runner before Great Western come after me for wrecking one of their trains. Everybody's gone to the Rapture. Well, they haven't. They certainly haven't gone to Paddington Station. And there we go. Uh, how did we do? Green ticks across the board. Love that. <laughs> we were late. <laughs> we were quite late on a couple of stops, but uh, we weren't early, which seems to be the important thing. It doesn't matter if you're late. It's uh, if you're early. I mean, we completely overshot Ealing Broadway and uh, backed up and still got a green tick on that one. But if you turn up really early, then it doesn't seem to like that. The next service is, yeah, in 25 minutes. Uh, no, 15 minutes. We're not going to wait that long. We're going to uh, quit to main menu. We're going to pick one more service. Uh, and then we're going to call it a night. So... Let's see. We'll do random weather conditions again. And then um, we'll we'll pick a sort of a, a rush hour kind of time, hopefully. So this is what I mean about the uh, DBS having two liveries. So that's the uh, DB Shanker. That's the EWS. Exactly the same train, just a different paint job. But we're not going to be running that. We ran that last time out. We're running the Class 166 this time. So, random weather time. Look away now. Spring clear. We've just run spring clear, so we'll run that again. Ah, <laughs> this random thing isn't working very well. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm literally turning my head and looking away. Winter cloudy. There we go. That's something different. We haven't done winter cloudy yet today, so we'll do this. This will be our final run. Uh, and let's pick something at a time of day when we're likely to get some passengers. So you can see we've done that service before, the 9.32. Let's go for the sort of evening rush hour uh, London Paddington to Maidenhead or we could go to uh, Oxford or we could go to Banbury which do you want to go to Maidenhead Oxford or Banbury I'll let you guys choose Does the weather affect how difficult it is to control the train? Uh, it does make it harder to see out the <laughs> out the cab when it's snowing. It really makes it hard to see. It can sometimes be a little bit harder to uh, to slow down as well. You know, if it's cold and the the, uh, the uh, tracks are icy. So we've got three for Oxford, one for Banbury. No one wants to go to Maidenhead. <laughs> it looks like Oxford is the people's choice. Oh, there's another for Banbury. Now it's suddenly a bit closer. K 
Kettering. <laughs> nope. <laughs> we can't go to Kettering, Kyle. Line doesn't extend that far. Uh, the only locos, you know, in the GW pack are the three that you saw. Uh, as I say, there is also in this, the base game, there's the American pack, which gives you an Amtrak passenger service and um, a CSX, you know, heavy haul freight loco. And then there's one passenger service in the German pack, uh, which is also included in the base game, which is another EMU. Uh, and that's it. That's the lot. Uh, yeah, it's Oxford. That's where everyone wants to go. So, well, most people want to go to Oxford. So, we will run from Paddington to Oxford. Hopefully, we'll have some passengers this time. I just bought this. It's hard to remember what to do. Help. Um, well, you can try watching and, and maybe pick up a couple of tips from me, but... I would say play the scenarios again if you if you're unsure. The scenarios are kind of the tutorial. Okay, so first stop Maidenhead. Would help if I actually turn the uh turn the key on. Put the reverser in forward. Uh let's get our running lights on. Uh Where's the train cab lights? There we go. Let's turn those on. Let's get the cab light on so we can see where we're going. And of course, we need, actually need to start the locomotive as well. That helps. Uh, engine start. There we go, we are off and running. Uh, 24 miles to go to Maidenhead and 22-ish minutes to get there. No passengers. Well, there might be people on the train. We'll, we'll, we'll have a look. Don't forget this train has sat at the platform waiting for a while, so there may already be people on the train. We shall see in just a moment. Let's have a look. Have we got passengers? Uh, yes, we have a passenger. <laughs> Smile, <laughs> you're on camera. <laughs> you are live on Jimbo Plays Games. Uh, he doesn't want to talk to us. Uh, anyone else? Yes, we have two people there. We have a, a woman there. More people in here. Look, we're definitely going to see some movement of passengers on our train getting on and off. That's good to see. Let's get the speed up a little bit. All right, Brandon, take it easy, friend. I'll catch you next time.
Got some lovely graffiti on the side of the walls here. Staple of any railway ever, <laughs> anywhere really. Looks like that goes down to join the underground. We're going to be switching line at some point here. We get a bit more speed going though. Accelerating when the uh, the rails are icy can be a slow process as well. You have a lot less traction. And there we go, we're merging onto the line. I thought we would move lines at some point. Trying to get this lined up for a really nice screenshot. I hope. And let's uh, whack up the speed a bit more. do like how much control you get with the cameras you really can move them around and get some really great views and some really good angles you can see here we're at full acceleration and we're not accelerating very fast at all because the rails are all icy and slippy Is there any way of preventing motion sickness when playing this? Yeah, don't rock yourself from side to side and you should be okay. <laughs> uh, take it easy, Angel Fire. Thanks for dropping by. Elite Reaper says, funny story, I uh, watched me before, he watched me before buying this game. Uh, quite a few people have said that they bought the game because they watched me play this, so... Uh, uh, I suppose I should try, probably try and get a job working for Dovetail <laughs> in the press, de press department. I've had at least half a dozen people come up and say they bought the game because they watched me stream it. Oh, wow. We had a sudden change of lighting there. That was dramatic. Very dramatic. Am I going to go and do any live streaming back on PGR Sliv uh, Sliv No, Probably not. You know, uh, we're, we're live streaming you know, our, uh, our live series on, um, on South Mountain Creamery, and that's going to continue until you know, I've had enough of that map, which isn't going to be for a little while yet. Do you have a button to release sand on the tracks like real trains? Uh, yes, you do. On some trains. I don't know if it's on every single one, but I think it is. 
let's have a look in cab. There is something in the cab about a um, a sander. Brake sanding. But I don't know if there's anything about wheel sanding. You know, so you can help improve your traction for brake for braking. Uh, but I don't know about, you know, just for general acceleration. Oh, there we go. Sanding and traction. You've got normal and isolated. But I don't really understand these functions, so I don't tend to play around with them. Yeah, I've got a fire alarm you can set off as well, although I'm not going to do that while we're on the middle of a run. One of these days, I'm just going to sit in, in an empty train and just play about with the buttons and see what happens. Does it take a while to get used to the controls? Um, I would say no more than any any game. There's always a, a period of acclimation of getting used to a new control system. Um, sometimes you will end up, you know, pressing the wrong buttons. That's just inevitable. Uh, but generally, it's not too bad. About to get decapitated by a station there. <laughs> Let's see how we're doing time-wise. Oh, we've got a red light coming up. Let's start slowing down for that. Let's see if we can request a pass as well. We need the emergency brake. We're not going to stop in time. Oh, she's going to be close. Oh, they've let us through. They've let us through. Oh, look how close we were to that signal. We'd have stopped in time, but only just. That was, uh, yeah, that, that, that came out of nowhere, really. I wasn't really paying attention. We've got another one coming up ahead as well. So there's, we've obviously caught up to another train further up the line. Let's see if we can see where that is. We're going this way. Maybe maybe it was that train we caught up to and it's switching tracks, maybe. It must be. It must be that one. Alright, let's start opening up the throttle again. Yeah, that was close though. We uh, we very nearly uh, nearly failed the objective instantly. You go through a red light, and that's it. End of scenario. End of uh, end of service. You 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 fail. So uh, yeah, you have to be really really careful not to do that. You can sometimes oh, my stomach's growling a bit. Uh, you have to sometimes you can you can you know request to pass through, and they'll let you through. Other times they'll just sit, make you sit and wait until the line is clear. Depends what's you know what's ahead and what's going on. Does it have windscreen wipers? Yes it does. At various different speeds as well. And you need these when it's raining or snowing. Especially when it's snowing because you just can't see out the window without them. It's impossible to see without without the wipers on maximum when it's uh, when you're in a blizzard. Oh, I just stood up. I don't want to do that. Sit back down again. There we go.
I read the first line of your comment there, Martin. It says, uh, "I just ordered pizza. Wanna slice you?" And I'm like, "What the f- what the hell?" <laughs> And then I had the way it carried on. And I'm like, that makes a bit more sense, you know. Remember, commas are your friends. <laughs> Punctuation and capitalization are your friends. It's the difference between helping your Uncle Jack off a horse and helping your Uncle Jack off a horse. Let's see, we're 11 miles out, nine minutes to go. We should be good. We're doing 83 miles an hour, so we should, as long as we don't get any more signal malarkey, then we should be absolutely fine to arrive on time at Maidenhead. It's always a little bit harder to arrive on time when you have, you know, this bad weather, because it, it takes so much longer to get up to speed, and you can be really unlucky <laughs> with your slowing down as well. Uh, and if you have uh, signal problems, yeah, then you lose so much time slowing down and uh, it's not so much the slowing down but getting back up to speed again once you clear the uh, you know the blockage ahead or the uh, the hazard Mark wants to know can you go to UK stations uh, well we are going to UK stations at the moment but you have a very limited you know run you know you can go from uh, Paddington about 30 miles down the Great Western uh, or up the Great Western Railway uh, route to Reading and that's about as far as you can go uh, so you get about 30 odd miles just over 30 miles of, uh, of track that you can run on on the UK bit there is also uh, an American pack and a German pack included in the game so you get to run on those uh, lines as well and there is a UK expansion coming in uh, in September, September the 11th, which is the West Somerset Heritage Railway. The camera view is uh, whatever I want it to be. Uh, it's offset at the moment, but I could set the camera here if I wanted to. It's entirely up to me how I run it. You really do when you're running on the... Uh, the class 43 get a, a massive sense of speed when you've got the nose down here at 125 miles an hour um, you know things really whiz past pretty quickly uh, but I can set the camera wherever I want it I can set it directly above I can scroll to the back of the train I can try and go underneath the train a bit <laughs> you know, to the other side it's entirely up to me uh, and there is a free cam as well uh, so these are your external cameras you have a boom camera so that kind of just sits there and you can just uh, kind of swing on the boom a little bit and it just gradually and it is a really gradual process but you can gradually swing around on a fixed arc like that from one side to the other and you've got the same for the rear as well uh, and then you've got free camera which literally it's just that <laughs> uh, it's just the camera is you can go wherever you want and you're not t you're not tethered to the train so you can try and keep up with the train if you want to uh, depending on how fast the train's going you can overtake it or sometimes you can't but you basically you just choose where you want the camera to be And then just plonk it down and, and watch, basically. So you get those long sweeping shots of trains whooshing past you. Uh, so there's all sorts of different cameras you can go with. And then you've got the internal camera. Sometimes, depending on the train, you might have more than one internal view. Oops, wrong button. But the front camera is always tethered to the train itself. And it starts at the front. And then the rear camera is tethered to the train. 
Um, so you can move around a little bit around the train, but it's tethered to the back of the... You know, it starts default towards the back of the train. But it's up to you where you set the camera position. Uh, what pizza do I like? Uh, I'm a meat eater, so I like, uh, you know, the meat feast pizzas with... Uh, you know, the, uh, the chicken and the pepperoni and the sausage and, and the ham, you know, all the meat and the ground beef. It's amazing if you get a, 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 a if you use a service on a regular basis, like a takeaway service, then they start to know you and they start to recognise your order. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, sometimes they'll they'll, they'll uh, give it a, you know if you give it a funny name they'll stick with it. I used to have a way back when when I used to live in rugby many 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 years ago. I had a takeaway I used to go to that was a uh, a burger was. Um, a quarter pound of burger with bacon and then cheese and then another quarter pound of burger on top of that with more bacon and more cheese and then chicken kebab meat and then the top bun it was this huge great big thing it was like four quid five quid i think it was uh, it was it was it was incredible greasy as hell i called it uh, i called it a heart attack in a bun <laughs> It was cholesterol heaven, but it was like a heart attack in, the, in a bun. Just so much grease and, and cholesterol, but it was so tasty. And I've got some yellow signals. We're going to get a red. We are closing in on Maidenhead. We are two miles out, going at 90 miles an hour, so we've got to throttle back a little bit and we've got plenty of time to get there as well did I have that after a night in the town uh, no <laughs> usually um, usually I had that just on an afternoon at the weekend <laughs> You know, um, you know, wander into town and and go visit the. Uh, well, I say wander into town. I lived in town at that point. Uh, just wander, it, you know, around the corners of the shop and and buy one of them. When I was feeling hungry on a, on a weekend, if I was out just doing a bit of brown, you know, wandering around or shopping. Let us through. We're only a mile away. It's going to eat away all that extra little bit of time we had. <clears throat> no route available. <sighs> Come on. No route available. <coughs> Come on, give me a route. Something's in front of us and it's slowing us down. Oh, they haven't denied me. Oh, we're getting close to this <laughs> this red light. We can't go through it. There goes another 166 there. It's not going to let us through. We're going to have to sit and wait for the line to clear. We're going to be late into Maidenhead as a result of this now. Come 
Come on, let me through. We're so close to Maidenhead. We're late now because of this. There's a class 43 heading towards us, I think. Yeah, that's class 43. How long are we sat here at this uh, signal? This is ridiculous. <sighs> Come on, let us through. Trying to run a train service here. We're rolling back. <laughs> We're on a slight gradient. We're rolling down the hill. Let's uh, just pull forward a little bit more. It's still not going to let me through. Does the simulator come with tutorials? Uh, kind of. Um, it has scenarios, and each scenario teaches you something, but it's it's not the, the clearest of tutorials, let's say that. It's not a simple, um, this is this, this is the basic functions, and this is the more complicated functions, this is the really complicated functions. It's kind of, this is what you need to do to do this particular mission, this is what you need to do to do that mission. Now you've got to try and remember everything and do it when you need to on... on uh, you know, on free play so it's yeah it, it, uh, you've kind of got tutorials but they're not you know they're not typically very clear there's no it's not like a standard tutorial that teaches you everything you need to know in a nice steady progression they teach you what you need to know for that particular scenario and that's pretty much it <laughs> I think I might order a pizza at this rate. We could be here for a while. What is causing the hold-up? It's trying to switch us across. Ugh, that's what's causing the hold-up. There's a train on the platform, look. So that train that went whizzing past us, that's what's holding us up. Can't go anywhere till he pulls off. So it looks like he's overtaken us in the queue, and now we're stuck here waiting for him. I'm guessing there's no platform on this line, which is why we can't move on to this one. He's pulling out that way. We need to be on this line, and this guy's not moving at all. He's got a green light. Hurry up and go! We're going to see another train come whizzing past us in a moment, I think. Now nah, he's stopped at a signal. What's he waiting for? Ah, oh, come on. This is ridiculous. <coughs> 
completely at the mercy of uh, the signalling gods here. We're now five minutes late, over five minutes late for Maidenhead. Oh, 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 he's moving, he's moving. <clears throat> Come on, we should get the all clear in a moment. No route available. You know we want to stop at the station. The station platform is clear unless the other guy's pulling in there now. He's not moving either. Come on, let us through. Let's pull into the station. I've never been held up this long at signals before. Still, this is... This is where the simulation gets ultra-realistic. This is... <laughs> <laughs> this is British Railways, or you know what used to be British well, Railways, what's now privatised British Railways, at its uh, at its core, really. Unreliable late services. <laughs> if we go through the red light, instant fail, end of mission. Yeah, end of end of uh, end of route, and it immediately just kicks us out. We have to wait for the uh, for the light to go to yellow. All green. A yellow is basically, you know, you can move, but be warned that, you know, be prepared to slow down or stop because there may be a red up ahead. Green is just plow through at full speed. Or whatever the speed is permitted for this area, which at the moment for us is 125 miles an hour on this stretch of track. And we're doing zero. <laughs> Why is this not clearing? What could possibly be coming in here? In front of us? Don't tell me there's something on the other line over here. That's trying to sneak its way through ahead of us. If he gets in, in, in there ahead of us, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> I swear to God, this is just going to drive me crazy if he goes past us. He's getting yellow lights, but he's getting the go-ahead. Got green there, green there. Where is he? There he is. Looks like he's slowing down. Come on, let us through. Seriously, this is getting ridiculous now. We're ten minutes behind schedule now. Never ever experienced this before like this. This is just ridiculous. He's not even left this station, look. He's still he's still an entire station behind us. He's not even reached that station yet. Oh 
Where is he? He's not even showing up now. What is going on? You see, look, he's there. He's, he's, he's miles away from this station. Which is where we just whizzed through, just here. Going looking for him. There's nothing on the line. Let us through. This is just stupid. I'm sitting there having a cigarette and sulking now because I can't drive my train. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> All I want to do is just pull forward that li that just over half a mile to get to Maidenhead Station so I can you know, unload the train and carry on with the rest of the route. And it will not let me through, and I do not know why. This is my Kobayashi Maru scenario. <laughs> <laughs> not quite it's not an unwinnable situation I could just sit here and wait and wait and wait but <laughs> there comes a point where it's going to be over the top boring for you guys look how fast this guy's going he's going to come whizzing past us isn't he as long as we get through after him I'm going to check down the line and see if there's another train coming through that's going to hold us up even longer There's nothing. Oh, there's something there. If that gets through ahead of us, then I will. I will. Um, uh, well, I will end the stream before I smash my controller or my TV or both. Yeah, I think my scenario might be broken as well. I'm hoping that you know, once this guy goes through, it'll clear up and uh, let us in. And here he comes. You see, he's got a red light as well. So he's going to end up parked up. <laughs> he's going to end up parked up just here, next to us. Here he comes. Oh, look at Mr. Perfect having to stop right next to the light. We can do that. We can edge ourselves a little bit closer for the, uh, a little bit closer. Got to be really careful I don't go too far forward now. <laughs> Yeah, we're ahead. <laughs> we're going through first. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. <sighs> I 
Hi, David. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> Welcome to the stream of us sitting here at a red light doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> Which train are we? It doesn't matter because neither of us are going anywhere. We're not even in this, in this one anymore, look. For some reason. It's not rendering us in. The lights are off. Has our train gone out of service? I think our train might have gone out of service. Turn train lighting on. I think some... I think our train is broken. <laughs> I think it's taken us out of the schedule. Great British transport at its best. Yeah, you're not wrong there. You know what? I think we've we're, we're broken. We're not moving. We should be moving. Let's just there we go. <laughs> Signal passed at danger. Whoops! It took us out of service. So I don't know what happened there. Maybe we were just too slow getting there, and and it 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 kind of broke the uh, broke the route a little bit. So we might have found a bug. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably have to uh, get Dovetail to take a look at that and see if they can tell me what happened. But that was, yeah, that was not a great way to end the stream. But uh, end it we must. We have been going for three hours now. So, yeah, we'll call it a day here. Uh, I will be back with another live stream next week where we'll be looking at the Great Western Class 43. And we'll do some high-speed running on the Intercity 125. Oh, wow. Well, the... It's not called the Intercity 125 anymore. That was a British rail service, but you know what I mean. You know, that loco we can see right in front of us. Uh, we'll run that next time out, and then the time after that, we'll then probably either move to, we'll either move to America or Germany, one of the two I haven't decided yet. So, As I say, yeah, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed our, uh, our stream. And uh, we'll be back with some more in very soon, and we will definitely be back with the Great West, with sorry, with the uh, uh, Somerset Railway expansion when that comes out in September. So I will see you all again very soon.